Gabriel Lagasse here. Kind of excited. Gabriel Lagasse here, you know. Doc Gibbs and Cliff are in the house. guys must have ate some Cheerios today. All right, Emma Lagasse here. You know, people often ask me, what do I eat in the downtime, in my downtime? Well, I eat a lot of great things, actually. I love food, but one of my favorites is Chinese food, especially like dim sum. You guys do that dim sum thing? You know, a lot of, a lot, a lot of places doing it here. I mean, here in New York, you know, we got Chinatown, we got some great spots, San Francisco, but after that, it kind of gets a little, you know, it's spotty. <laughs> you know, dim sum, those tasty morsels are filled with everything, including, you know, vegetables, seafood, shrimps. Thing all right back there, ladies? <laughs> You're not sitting on any dim sum, are you? <laughs> well, tonight I'm going to show not only all of you, but our folks at home how simple it is to make these in your own kitchen, these tempting little dishes. Now, I thought tonight, why not, right? Kick it up a few notches, you know. So I'm gonna start, I'm gonna start with some sake marinated shrimp with a little cucumber and mango salad, if that's all right. Then Miss Hay, wait till you hear about Miss Hay. You don't know who she is yet, but her stuffed chicken wings will knock your socks off. We're gonna do those with some hoisin sauce. Craving perhaps maybe some crawfish dumplings? And then, definitely gonna blow your mind when you see these shrimp stuffed crab claws. Oh, just wait. So if it's okay with you, figure we'll do a little dim sum tonight. Is that all right? You know where, right? On number one! You guys like dim sum? Yeah. How you doing, honey? The cats, how are you, buddy? How you doing? I like that. I know those guys. It's amazing how simple these things are. Look at these little packages with sticky rice. See, basically, dim sum, it's a few things that uh, we've got to get to know about dim sum before we start it. First of all, it's from the Canton part of the region. That's where it really started. And um, dim sum, you saw me roll in the cart. It's basically, they either have them in the carts or trays that you actually pick. So there's categories of dim sum, small, medium, large, and uh, super kicked up. <laughs> Often you don't see the super kicked up ones, but <laughs> a lot of times the prices of the dim sum. I went to a recent place, they had a conveyor belt that just like went around, it was a very cool thing. Have you ever seen one of those setups? They had the prices on the bottom of the plate. That was really cool. You know, you just like, you pick it up, go, dollar 30, forget that, you know? It's out of my league. But um, as I said, they can be filled with crab, with vegetables. They can be fried, they could be steamed. Those like steam bun things that they do with like the pork thing in there. Oh. Must be a pork thing, I guess. <laughs> Even little broths that they do the dumplings in. They're very simple. They're generally made with the same type of uh, wrapper. Sometimes they steam them. Sometimes they fry them, like with, uh, like with pot stickers, different pot stickers. So they flavor them. They color them with different, different vegetables. They flavor them. They steam them with different herbs. So I said, hey, why not? Let's do some uh, dim sum tonight. I'm excited about it. I talked to Doc just before we came out. I know he's excited about it. 
So uh, we're going to rock out dim sum style with Doc Gibbs and Cliff. This would be a good time for you to go get one of those, you know, you know what I mean. When we come back, we're going to definitely kick it up a notch. Stick around. Doc Gibbs. some tonight, right? Yeah. And you know where? Right here, live in New York City. That's yeah. it. All right, before we get started, that was the incredible Doc Gibbs and Cliff. Yeah. I'm so excited. Great show for you. I can't. I'm excited about this dish, but before we do this, I just want to kind of give you a little 101 on a couple of things. First thing being with dim sum, generally you are always served tea, hot tea. Five different varieties of tea. There's the oolong, there's a black tea, white tea. What am I missing, Jill? Green tea. Green tea, of course, <laughs> the most logical one. <laughs> it's scented black, white, green, and oolong. Thank you, Jill. Thank you very much. You're welcome. I didn't want to forget that because it's very important. The other thing that's important is setting up your wok. People, we've gotten so many emails about this on that www.foodtv.com thing, about what's up with this ring. It's a true story. See, if you want it lower when you're setting up your wok, first of all, you can just have it on the burner if you want to do that. But they get really hot. That's the whole key. Second thing, even if you have an electric stove, you really want to get it smoking hot, which I'm going to do in a minute. So if you want the hot, the wok lower to the stove, you do it on the bigger side. If you want it higher up from the stove, and I'm going to do this with tongs because this thing has been on here for a bit. See, folks? You turn it over like this, and that raises it higher. So it's like, you know, it's kind of like their way of like sort of this thing, like high, <laughs> medium, medium low you know it's the same thing except just a little different so I, I thought it was we should establish that now that we've done that I'm gonna turn over my wok back to I want it like really hot so I'm gonna turn it over now it's a little lower to the stove crank up the heat as as uh, high as it can go we're gonna let that start flavors dim sum marinades very important you know when they wrap these little dumplings with vegetables or with shrimp or scallops or whatever, they just don't, they gotta have flavor. Because most of the time they're steamed. So here's one that I love. I'm gonna show you this. Some crushed red pepper. Oh yeah, that'll kick it up a few notches right there. <laughs> this is a little soy sauce little rice wine vinegar, sesame oil, Worcestershire. I love the food, it has garlic. This is cilantro. This is fresh ginger that's been ground. Love ginger. You were a Gilligan's Island fan, too? <laughs> that ginger was amazing. <laughs> so, now what we do is we get this whisked up, get the flavors going, like this paste. 
little more rice wine vinegar, you see? Now we've got kind of like a little dressing. Now, obviously, this is going to be pretty spicy with that much pepper. You know, it's a common sense thing. If you want it half of that, you'd use half the amount. You know, a couple of pinches, you'd have a couple of pinches worth. I actually have one right here that we made earlier because now the flavors are there. Because now what you want to do is this. You want to take shrimp, or we say shrimps. And what you want to do, now, they generally would just season this with like regular salt and like white pepper. The key is, is you want to marinate these. Uh, let's marinate them all, why not? We're all friends here. But guys, the thing is, when you're marinating them, you gotta let this at least 30 minutes in advance. You gotta let them get some flavor, okay? So, 30 minutes in advance, Right? Oh, wait. You're excited about that. I'm excited about this. Check this out. A gift from the Sopranos. Yeah, the cast of Sopranos. Isn't that nice? They got a lot of money over there at HBO, I guess. I don't know. Just kidding. Now, see, wash. This simple salad we're going to do, I have mango. That's what this is here. When you're shopping for mango, okay, it should have some color. You got that buck like it has right here? But what you want to look for is the smell. You'll smell if it's getting ripe. And also, you just can lightly feel it like this, just like when you're going to go shop for an avocado, okay? If it's really firm, it's going to need to sit out for a couple of days. I julienne that up as well as some cucumber. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take the Juliana cucumber, the Juliana mango, some more fresh cilantro. Then you could use any kind of oil that you want, sesame oil. I'm just going to take just a little simple olive oil, just lightly. Now, you're going to think this is bizarre when I tell you this, but what you do, a little salt. Salt. Salt in the mango? Oh, it's unbelievable. It'll bring the flavor out. And also pepper. So we're going to let our little salad sit right here. Now, when you're ready, wok starts getting hot. What we're going to do is we're going to add a little oil to this. And I'm going to show you how you take the wok, this utensil like this, very, very, very hot. So please, be careful. What we're going to do is in batches like this, we're going to stir fry them, okay? When we come back, I'm going to show you how we're going to kick it up. Another notch! Stick around! How's it smelling in here? I just did the batch right here, the second batch. I wiped out the wok. Those of you that have woks or you're interested in getting one, you, uh, you never do any real heavy scrubbing. They have this little brush. As soon as you use it, you rinse it out. Use this little brush, clean all the little stuff out of there, scrape it down, wipe it out, and then you should re-season it, re-oil it. You don't, you don't put them in the dishwasher doing any of that stuff for that. That second batch I have in the wok right now, that was the one with the 
kicked up. <laughs> Pepper. All right. Oh, yeah. You're probably wondering at home, too, why I, let, I took the ring off. See, no more ring? Because I'm really trying to get some heat. Once you add the stuff in the wok the first time, you got to stir fry it. It's going to knock the heat down, I'm telling you. You saw how hot it was when we first started. Now I can barely get a sizzle on this thing. That's because it loses the temperature very quickly. But it's almost done. And I'm going to show you what we're going to do now while the first batch. What we're going to do is we're going to take a delicious shrimp that we stir fried, marinated, and we're going to do sort of a large plate dim sum style of the shrimp. Doesn't that look good? Take a little bit of that nice juice, the natural juice of the shrimp. We're going to take a little bit of that as well. Put a little bit of that on it. Okay? Then, real simple, what we're going to do is take a little bit of that mango and cucumber little salad. We'll put a little bit of that on there for garnish. Then what we'll do is we'll garnish it maybe with a little bit of cilantro like such. Maybe a little bit of red pepper like this. And there you have it. That's how simple it is, a little sake. <laughs> Gotta make some friends. See the incredible kitchen staff. So we've got all these little kicked up teapots. You see all the teapots around having a little tea? Another thing that uh, you'll find a lot, little sign like this is that when your teapot's empty, when you're eating dim sum, if you leave the lid half on, half off like that, it's a good indication to the waiter or the wait person that uh, you're out of tea, you need a refill. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> hey, come on. All right. But you may want to put yours back on. Isn't that right, Jill? Correct. Right? Is there any other signs? Um, to say thank you, if yes. you drum your fingers on the table, that's thank right, you do, after do they that. filled your tea. Like that? Yes. See? If you do that in New York, it means you want more donuts. <laughs> so you go like that, it means thank you. I think that's a very, very civilized thing. All right. I'm going to take this out of here. Looks good, huh? All right, before we move on, got to tell you, we're really uh, just amazed how many uh, incredible emails and that whole thing on the internet, just amazing. How many we get of them on that www.foodtv.com? I'm not kidding you, it's just amazing. Sake marinated shrimp, that sounds good right there. If that was coming out, that's the first category is it's got to sound good, right? Then it's got to smell good. Then it's got to taste good. That's the whole key with dim sum. There you go, folks. All right. Now, I was back to uh, WW land. Dear Emerald, there's no place to get dim sum where I live. Can I make it at home? Do you have any ideas? And that's from Eileen from Montana. Montana. See Eileen up there? Eileen's up there. Eileen, let me tell you, I haven't been to your great state, Montana, but uh, you can definitely find today's time with the internet, but in a lot of supermarkets and stores today, these simple little sort of what they call them and sell them as wonton wrappers. And you can fry them, you can steam them. That would be the first thing that I could say would be to make some of these at home, make some of your favorite fillings, and then you can make your own little dumplings like that. There's also some great literature. It's very easy to make. Or you can just keep watching Emerald Live and you probably, you know, will see the show tonight and hopefully be inspired. So uh, thanks for writing in, Eileen from uh, Montana. This, uh, 
This next dish, this next dish uh, is what we call Miss Hay's chicken wings. And uh, Miss Hay, oh yeah, Miss Hay is this uh, incredible, wonderful Vietnamese lady uh, that works uh, f for us at my restaurant, NOLA, uh, in the French Quarter. And um, since day one, when I first tasted this, and she made these for me, uh, and my chef, David McKelvey, they've been on the menu ever since. And she does them with this hoisin sauce, and they're just incredible. They're just so simple and incredible. And uh, we love Miss Hay, and I wanted to kind of do her chicken wings, because in my eyes, this is a perfect dim sum as well especially with something as inexpensive as chicken wings, okay? Check this out. She takes some ground pork, okay? So you can use ground beef if you want, but they use a lot of ground pork. <laughs> then she also puts a little bit of shrimp, about four or five shrimp that she chops up inside of this as well, okay? This is her version of this dish. Lots of fresh onions. Is Jay making trouble up there again? You gotta watch him, let me tell you. He, he can be very bad sometimes. And uh, I know Houston will attest for that as well, but just keep an eye on him up there, ladies. I got some uh, shiitake mushrooms. She usually uses some like woodier mushrooms, chopped up, a good strong mushroom chopped up like that. He may be sitting in your lap before you know it. And uh, some cilantro. Jay, we are trying to do some chicken wings down here. <laughs> and uh, some green onion. Some celery. Yeah. And then actually, a little bit of sugar. You can see with the humidity how it just kind of, just with the lights, you know, just kind of, but we got it now. Yeah, a little bit of sugar with the pork. How's the shrimp, okay? Excellent. All right, now. Then what she does is she uses this incredible stuff called fish sauce that you can get. And uh, it's a little salty, but use this fish sauce like this. I'm going to use a good, pretty good amount. Now, what we do is then we're going to mix all of this filling in here. You see that? You guys are with me in there, right? Okay. He's still up there? <laughs> Jay, what are you doing up there? It's amazing. You must be relatives of his. Either that or you must have slipped him a 20. All right, now, so we got the fill in like this. Now, let me show you the trick on these chicken wings. When you buy these chicken wings, guys, you see how it has uh, the full bone when you get them like this in the grocery store? The trick is, is to stuff these. If you pull down, you can do this with a knife or with your hands. If you pull down this skin and this meat, get a little knife, pull it right down, all of that meat will come down, okay? You can push it inside of this piece of the chicken wing, and then you snap or you can just chop that bone right out because that's when the filling, okay, like I did right here, you see? That's when this filling right here for Miss Hay, she takes this and puts this filling and just pushes that filling all the way down inside of that and fills up that chicken wing like that, or that filling. Just keep working it down like that. Okay? With me so far? So we got that. You can do this way in advance. Yeah, one second. You can do that, you can do that way in advance. <laughs> got the cleanest hands. <laughs> now, so the chicken wings are stuffed. Then what you do is you want to season them somehow. Salt and pepper will work. I season mine with a little Creole sauce. 350 degrees, voila, for 20 minutes inside of the oven. Yeah, you're correct. 20 minutes. <laughs> 20 minutes, 350 degrees. Now, here's the trick for Miss Hay. You love Miss Hay. When they come out of the oven, like these did here, this is 20 minutes. Oh, wait, they ain't done yet. Oh, no. No way. Now, if you want to eat them like that, go ahead. Miss Hay will be mad at you. 
We'll take some Creole seasoning in our flour like this. Then what she does is she takes these, dredges them right inside of the flour like this, 375 degrees. When we come back, another notch! Stick around! Everybody, that was Doc Gibbs and Cliff. I'm Emeril Lagasse, and if you're just joining us, Dim Sum is on the menu tonight, and uh, we're having a little ball. I can hear, I can hear the sizzle of Miss Hayes' chicken wings in the fryer right now. I can hear it. How'd you guys like that sake shrimp? Good stuff? All right, let me show you how we're going to finish this, and then I'm going to show you another dish. It's almost done right now. We'll get a little bit of lettuce like this. They use, as you guys know, a lot of lettuces on a lot of their different fried items, dim sum, Chinese restaurants, because they feel it absorbs a lot of the oil when they fry something. Plus, it uh, looks good, and it doesn't uh, affect the flavor, really, of what they're, uh, what they're making. We take Miss Hayes' chicken wings like this, okay? Oh, wait, you know what? You know what? No, you wait, 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 wait. <laughs> Going to take those chicken wings. See, they're stuffed like that. And then what she does... She'll take a little Chinese barbecue sauce, which is called hoisin. You can buy hoisin in a lot of the grocery stores and specialty stores. Then you can kick it up a few notches, and she kicks it up. Adds a little sake to it, a little more ginger. But watch what she does. She takes the hoisin, and she'll drizzle the hoisin like this. Wait. <laughs> then she takes crushed peanuts. Oh, yeah, she's an amazing lady. Her whole, just about her whole family works for us. She started out as bus, bus girls and bus, busmen. Now they're just managers. It's a really amazing story. All right, watch. I'm going to take these out, guys. They look good to me. I love chicken wings. I could eat these every day. Don't tell me Jay's on that side now. Oh, my God. <laughs> okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to season these. A little salt and pepper. <laughs> it's nice to do them like on a platter like this, you know? All right, now, stuffed chicken wings. See what happens is when you bake them, when you bake them like we did first, it cooks the filling. Sometimes she'll put these little vermicelli noodles in them too, if she's in a good mood, <laughs> which is most of the time. All right, I'm going to finish them up again. That hoisin. I wish somebody would drizzle hoist... Well, we won't go there. It's a private joke. I like that hoist in, Doc, you know? Now, wait. Before we, before we go to another level, 
We got the platter right here. Is that all right for you guys? Right? All right, look, I'm just going to do it. Let me show you how they do this real quick. They cut the end of the scallion off. Then what they'll do is they'll take a paring knife, and they make some cuts like this. Then they soak them in water. See, and they got, like, these little flowers. After they soak, like, in ice water like that, they have, like, little flowers like that. Miss Hayes, chicken wings. All right, we're going to make a dumpling. I'm going to use crawfish. I'm going to use crawfish. One egg white, some cilantro, some onion, sesame oil, cayenne pepper. Cayenne pepper. Then, we're going to puree this up like this. Done deal. Wow. Difficult, huh? Now, let me show you what we're going to do. You take one of those wrappers, like I said from our email. You can get them round, you can get them square. What we're going to do is we're going to take a little bit of the filling like this. I'm coming, Rhoda, I promise. <laughs> okay, a little bit of the filling like this. And then what you do is you get some water. Go right around it, just like such. And then what you do is you bring them up to the top. You see? And then what you do is you just crimp them. You can twist them. You can do all kinds of things to them, depending on the shape that you want. Make little ones like that, little packages. Do this ahead of time, no problem. The wok is also used to steam as well. Put a little water, a little stock, however you want to flavor it. Then you got these steamer things like this. See, you got the top. You got the middle one that you can do vegetables. And then we got all our dumplings that we did, you see? Then what you do, you take the steamer just like this, inside of the wok, and you start steaming our wonderful dumplings. When we come back, another notch! Stick around! <laughs> Everybody, Emma Lagasse here. That was Doc Gibbs and Cliff. Yeah. What I uh, what I did while we're steaming our dumplings, I made this one wonderful little with uh, white and black sesame seeds and sesame oil, fish sauce. Made this little ginger dipping sauce right here for our dumplings. You can hear it steaming. Occasionally, you got to check the water before we go over there. Got to make sure that the water is not all evaporated because then the wok gets super hot. The wok connects to the bottom bamboo, the bamboo connects to the middle bamboo, and then what you got is a fire on your hands, basically, okay? Not a cool thing to do. All right, little uh, olive oil. Where is Jay now? I swear he must have had an extra dose of Viagra today or something. Jay, leave the girls alone, will ya? This guy's incredible today. All right, I'm going to start with some onion, sweet pepper, green onions, about 40 cloves of garlic, little cilantro. Oh, watch this. Not going to believe it. We're going to cook that up. Now, while that's cooking, let's go check on our dumplings. You guys ready for this? Yeah. Buck, you ready? Check this out. We'll see if they're... Woo! Oh, they are beautiful, too. They are beautiful. Okay, folks, so now what we're going to do is this. Gorgeous. We're going to take this layer here. Please be careful. It is steamed. And then we're going to take our bottom layer out just like such. See what I was telling you about the water? All right, now, what we're then going to do I guess I'll use these things here. I like working with my hands, though. 
Going to take our steamed dumplings, dim sum style. Turn them around. Those crawfish dumplings, you see that? And let me tell you, they don't waste them either. See how simple it is, folks? Steamed crawfish dumplings with a little ginger sauce, all right? We'll come back, get you a little bit of that. Here, try one. Be careful, okay? All right, look at this. All right, now our onions and all that get nice and cooked. Let's keep them hot. Now what we're going to do is this. We're going to take some shrimp, add it in there, right? Oh, wait, wait, wait. You ain't seen nothing yet. Take some shrimp, just lightly cooked. Going to kind of make like a little patty like this, you see? They're going to cook really, really fast. Then we're going to let them cool, all right? We're going to let them cool like this. Watch. Nice and cool. You don't want to cook them too, too much. I'll tell you why. What we're going to do now, a little Parmesan, an egg, some breadcrumbs to kind of hold them all together. You know what I mean? Now, going to mix this up. Wait till you see these. Oh. <laughs> like when they uh, realized that there was a moon and Mars, then they realized there was food like this. Watch. Take these beautiful crab claws. Love these. You make a little ball like this. Stick the crab claw in there, and we're going to shape them around like this. We're going to take that shrimp filling, shape them around. We're going to dredge these in seasoned flour. When we come back, I'm going to show you how to eat them. Stick around. We'll be right back. Doc Gibbs, everybody. <laughs> And Cliff, everybody. That's that Greeka drum. Greeka. I like that. <laughs> We're gonna figure a way out how to how to make them. Right. We gotta cook something with them. Look, Doc. After you shape all that filling around them and you fry them for about four or five minutes, talk about a perfect little dump, uh, little dim sum, huh? Look at this. I'm gonna change my mind on the presentation, if that's okay with you guys. Gonna put these here. Don't they look great? Yeah. Then, what we'll do, we'll take a little bit of that hoisin sauce right in the center. And then we'll take a little bit of that hoisin sauce and we'll just kind of kick it up a couple of notches, you know what I mean? Remember, when anything comes out of the fryer, that's when you want to season it, okay? So now, what we're going to do is we'll take this batch here, place that batch right around over here like such. See, and the crab claw is buried right in that shrimp, that little filling like that. So when you bite one of these things, you're going to get that nice, you know, that crab claw you can hang on to. You get like a little treat down there. The meat, you know, from the crab claw. Now, I'm going to simply garnish it. Just a couple of mushrooms like this. Somebody had uh, mentioned earlier what was ginger, fresh ginger look like. This is what ginger looks like, okay? This is obviously a big one, but when you buy this, you can actually buy it like by the piece like this, you see? Refrigerates real well. Smells incredible. I'm going to uh, just simply garnish this, folks, with a little bit of flour like this and uh, just kind of a little bit of my spice. Perhaps maybe you want to just do a little clusters like this. Very, very visual food as well. And uh, then we'll just get this on the cot and we'll go have our own little dim sum party, you know what I mean? Hey, what can I say? I want to thank you all for joining me tonight. I'm Emily Lugosi. See you tomorrow, everybody.